Okay, um, Douglas Pinkham again with Pinkham and Associates. We are now going to go over um, form FL117. It is a notice and acknowledgement of receipt. This is a form that is used uh, at the beginning of a case or that can be used. This is not a mandatory form, but this is a form that can be used at the beginning of a case. Um, it is sent along with the papers that need to be served on the other party. And this form simply says, yes, I've received the papers. That's all it says. Notice and acknowledgement of receipt. It doesn't say that you agree with what's in the paperwork. You don't, you don't have to agree with what they're asking for. You're, done, you're not even saying that you reviewed the paperwork. You're just saying, I was served. I've received it. Um, this is a technical form. So if you're served this form, you either need to sign it and send it back, or you need to file a response because you've been given notice that it's been served. Um, so if you're actually served with this FL-117, it's a big deal. So um, if you're the one filing the divorce and you want to use this to send to the other party to keep you from having to serve technically, serve them at work or serve them at home or whatever, then that's the reason you would use this form also. Keep in mind, just like in the real world when you're having somebody serve the paperwork, you, the party, cannot serve this form and can't serve the paperwork. You have to have a non-party to the case serve the paperwork. Your friend, your cousin, your coworker, your daughter, husband, new husband, whatever. Somebody else has to um, serve or mail this paperwork in place of being served. Okay, so let's go through the form. Pull it up. It's an FL-117. And those of you that can see the form while I'm doing this, uh, that's fantastic. Um, I'm going to start at the top. Um, just like every form, at the top, you're going to list your name and address and telephone number. If you have a fax number, great, put it there. If you don't, no problem. It's not required. Email address, same thing, not required. Uh, the next line is attorney four, and you put your name in there. The next line is uh, Superior Court of California, County of Put the county that your case is filed in on that line. Next line down is the street address, mailing address, city and zip code, and branch name of the court where this case is at, where your filing is being done. So um, it might be obvious you might have only one county courthouse where they do family law. So you put that information in there. However, could be Los Angeles where they have many outlying uh, courthouses that um, you could list. They could be in Norwalk or Pomona or Long Beach. You need to put the courthouse information and address in there where it's actually being served. All right, then the next line down is petitioner and respondent. The petitioner and the respondent's names never, never change. So if you're the petitioner in the matter, your name goes on petitioner. If you're the respondent, your name goes on the respondent line. Um, okay, the case number. By the time you're going to use this form, you probably have already filed the paperwork uh, if you're the petitioner. So if you're the petitioner and you've already filed, then you know the case number. Go ahead and put it in there. Next line. Um, two, the name of the individual being served. That's the name of the person you're sending um, this paperwork to and the person you're trying to serve. Um, okay, um, now there's an X box down, it says notice, let me read this box, this is, where, this is very important to you, so let me read it, it says notice, the documents identified below, okay, and there's going to be documents that are listed in boxes and whatnot below, we haven't gotten there yet, but um, they're talking about those documents, so one of them is a summons and one of them is a petition, likely, uh, so uh, hold on one second. Okay. Um, the documents identified below are being served on you by mail with this acknowledgement form, period. You must personally sign 
or a person authorized by you must sign this form to acknowledge receipt of the documents, the documents that are listed below. If the documents described below including a, include a summons and you fail to complete and return this acknowledgement form to the sender within 20 days of receiving it, of the date of mailing, excuse me, you will be liable for the reasonable expenses incurred after that date in serving you or attempting to serve you with these documents by any other methods permitted by law. So real quickly, that simply means that if you don't sign this and send it back, that and they have to go ahead and pay somebody a hundred bucks to then later serve you, they can charge you, the judge can order you to pay that hundred dollars back because all you had to do was sign this form and send it back. If you return this form to the sender, service of a summons is deemed completed on the date you sign this acknowledgement of receipt below. This is not an answer to the action. So this is not responding to the divorce, which you need to do. This is simply saying I received the paperwork. So it says this is not an answer to the action. If you do not agree with what is being requested, you must submit a completed response form to the court within 30 days. So, and, and that would be true anyway. So once you receive this, you need to know that you're being served one way or another. You don't have to technically um, send it back if you're going to file a response within 30 days. But just understand, this is a, a technically important form. Okay, um, the next line down is line number two date of mailing. So if you're the one sending it out and serving, trying to serve this way, you put the date on there that you put the stuff in the mail. Below that, um, the person that is actually mailing it can't be you. Like I said, it has to be somebody different. Your mother, your brother, your cousin, your coworker. You can't be the one that's actually signing this and mailing it. Um, but the person that's serving it or sending it out puts their name uh, on three and they sign to the right of the black arrow. Okay. Now, acknowledgement of receipt. Number four reads, I agree, I received the following. Now let's, it's got a whole list of documents here where you can check off. Let's say you're serving, you're the one serving, and let's say you're serving a regular divorce action uh, with, um, with kids and, and whatnot. So you would mark family law petition, that's an FL 100, a summons, FL 110, and a blank response, which is required anytime or any way you serve. Okay? Um, if you're serving, if you're filing and serving a pat uh, paternity action, then you would mark B. Um, if you are sending out a uh, petition for custody and visitation without a divorce or legal separation, um, then you would mark C. By the way, if you're serving or filing legal separation, it's the same as a divorce action as far as this form is concerned, and you're going to mark A. All right, so then D is a whole bunch of other associated documents. So you would mark D and one of these other documents if you're serving those documents on them also. It is, uh, if you have children, you're going to mark D and one because you also have to serve that UCCJEA form, the FL 105. Um, now, if you are also going to complete your declarations of disclosure, there's other, another video, a group of videos to tell you all about the declarations of disclosure. But if you're going to serve your declarations of disclosure at the same time you want to serve the initial divorce, legal separation, um, then you're going to want to mark two because you will have a completed and a blank declaration of disclosure, FL 140. You're going to have a, you're going to mark three because you're going to have a completed and blank schedule of assets and debts. Um, you, um, or you could do an FL-160, which is the four, but I highly recommend that you use the FL-142. 
then you will also positively mark the number five because if you're going to serve your declarations of disclosure, you will have a completed and a blank income and expense declaration. Um, you don't need six if you do an, uh, if you do an FL-150. Um, and if also at the time of this initial filing, you also want to ask, or serve paperwork that shows that you're asking the court to, for custody and visitation orders, child support, spousal support, attorney's fees requests. If you're asking the court to make any orders on any of this stuff, then, then you're going to mark box number seven, uh, which is a request for order. And then you're also going to mark eight, and you're going to write in there eight where it says specify. You're going to write declaration because you're going to have to put together what's known as a declaration uh, if you're going to serve an RFO, a uh, request for order. Okay. Um, uh, also, there's another set of videos for requests for orders. So let's say, for example, you want to ask for child support or spousal support. I've got a video group of videos on that. If you want to ask for custody and visitation, I've got a group of videos on that. If you want to file um, an RFO at the beginning of your case asking for custody, visitation, child support, spousal support, and attorney's fees, all the above, I have a set of videos for that. Um, go find that. But if you're going to do that and you want to serve it at the beginning, you also want to mark these boxes as I indicated. Okay. Um, then it gets mailed out by this person that you have serving it or mailing it out for you. Again, it cannot be you. You cannot be a part of the action and, so, and, and serve this form. Uh, then when it's received by the other party, the recipient will put the date that they received it on line five. They will write their name on line six and sign their name to the right and mail it back to you. It would be a good idea that if you're going to serve this way to provide a, st a self-addressed stamped envelope connected to this form so that all I got to do is sign it, write their name on it, date it, and put in the envelope and send it back to you. Okay, that's everything on the FL-117, the uh, Notice and Acknowledgement of Receipt. Um, if you have uh, further questions on that, you're more than welcome to give us a call. We'll, we'll help you out with that. Uh, again, this is Doug Pinkham with Pinkham & Associates. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you.